Yeah, I'm not going to be able to use the Wi-Fi. It's not strong enough. But I have my phone will work fine. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Not bad, not bad. This is my husband, Steven. Steven's Clark. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Going to live stream tonight's event. Oh. Woohoo, yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess we're on time, yeah. Got the Caravita reading, so. Nice. Going in to enjoy you. I'm going to do a little talk out here and give people a little background in the poetry reading. How often do these happen, by the way? Uh, this one happens once a month. Okay, with like the Wednesday, like the third Wednesday or second Wednesday of the month? Yeah. Okay. This is, right. this is Sarah from Occupy, for people that are watching. Hello. All right, she's lives here in Sausalito in a nice little town here. In the day. Life going good for you? Yeah, it's going to be. Yeah. I've got some flyers here about Social Justice Month. Okay. November. Alrighty. The uh, Revolutionary Poets Brigade is kind of spearheading it, and there'll be poetry, music, and talks by various people. So there's six different events throughout the month of November, all focused on different social justice um, themes. Okay. So, all right. And uh, where can you find out about that on Facebook? Uh, you have a page? Um, I guess it's socialjusticemonth.org. Okay. Cool. Oh, thank you. see you inside. Yeah. Now we're out here at the Studio 333. And I'm here at the request of my friend Caravita. We'll be reading here in a minute. I'm just out here taking a little time before the show gets started. Because I will be sitting in there for a couple of hours. And you know how it is when you're waiting to get into a place, huh? And this gives me a chance to build up a little bit. And it's a beautiful evening here in Sausalito. It's about 65 degrees, 68 degrees. And it's usually the best time of the year in California, at least in the Bay Area, weather-wise. Let me get my pack of smokes up in here. Maybe I shouldn't smoke. I'm going to smoke a joint instead. <laughs> Being a medical marijuana patient, you can do such things out here in California. You're from somewhere around the world. If you, uh, people want to see it later on, I do archive all the live streams, and they can go to Freeman Sullivan, just Google it, on, and uh, you'll be able to find it. Oh, Plus alarm. Hi. Sh she told me that um, something about this going to be a worldwide Monsanto because I worked on Prop 37. Tell me about this worldwide thing that's happening. <coughs> as long as we're going to meet Tell on me. that. Okay. Uh, I'm going to meet on the Golden Gate Bridge by okay. the Golden Gate Bridge. But what do you think of it? Uh, Saturday. This Saturday? Yeah. Honest to God. Okay. Uh, Monsanto is a theme? Yeah. Uh, uh, label GMOs. Yeah, it's March Against Monsanto. Okay, right. and it's going to meet at what time? Uh, it's 11.30, I believe. Yeah. 11.30, uh, on, both, on, both, on both ends, on both ends of the bridge? <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not exactly so sure. So if I go to uh, which doc? Facebook. Facebook and go to... a page called March Against Monsanto. Okay, March Against Monsanto. Right, and then just look up San Francisco. There'll okay. be a link for the 
at San Francisco. So Facebook and, and go, okay. Right. So it's going to be in March, okay. Mm -hmm. Right, all the way across, across the bridge. Across the bridge. Oh, this right. Saturday. Yeah. This Saturday. Good. What, what, time, I, what time are people assembled? About 11.30. 11 30. See, because I worked on Prop 37 last year. I got really into it. We mm -hmm. almost got it here, but it spread. The energy spread well, around. Well, too much money. But they, right. we almost won. Yeah, they spent 50 mil. We only spent five. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Right. Thank you. I didn't know. Isn't that exciting? It's right. good. But the people are... Yeah, they're, while they're trying, you know, I notice more people up. are defiant they're now than ever. <laughs> yeah, but it's waking up a little too late. Yeah, you're on, you're live on camera, by the way. This is Grace. This is Clark. He does a lot of streaming. Oh, good. Streaming, streaming, streaming. Live streaming. I don't do streaming. I just do talking. Marilyn, Marilyn, Marilyn. I like this by the live stream. It is. It is. It's a flowing river, isn't it? It's a flowing river. And we all have an endless thing. We jump into it. Merge. Yeah, the good camera's not going to work, Carl. Unfortunately. You're taking it to another level. Go for it. Anyway, there's lots of great art around here for you folks. I'm not really able to zoom in on it tonight because I'm just using the selly cam and not the. Uh, I can move in if you want to check out some of the art. I like this piece right here. From the other here. Excuse me. Six inches. Six feet. 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 <laughs> this chair has its advantages too. Okay, we're a nice little crowd here. 20, 20 back here. Yeah. Oh, I'm just talking to people on the camera. Now we're almost on set. Hey, uh, that's Arthur Sheridan over there. Give it up for Arthur Sheridan and his poetry event every last Thursday of the month at Taste the Ground across the street down in Atlanta. It's uh, really incredible. Uh, it's an Free for all of music and, and people who want to be on the mic, you know. It's, I recommend it highly. And Arthur will welcome each and every one of you up to the stage with his standard of yeah. Come on up. Okay. And, I, and I'm almost as good as that, not quite. I most marble, also known as Rusty Rebar, the all gay rodeo. <laughs> well, that's, that's on a need to know basis. <laughs> no one needs to know. <laughs> and this is Sunset Tree by the Bay. Started by the original genius. This is your mom. Before that, a little house, what's that called? Housekeeping. The bathroom is the first, that way left, I guess that's called left. Open. And um, I don't care if your cell phone goes off, you know, you want to embarrass yourself. It's okay. That's on your great mind. And uh, what else? Um, yeah, we would appreciate contributions for the bad wine. For sure, we'd like five dollars in that box. If you didn't get a five dollar bill in the box coming in, please leave one going out. All the proceeds go to the poets. 
Um, There's nothing wrong with this wine. It's, it's white. It's delicious. Thank goodness. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know. I want to say that next month on Wednesday, November 9th, we'll have Adrian Amundsen, Parthenia Hicks, and Catherine Ridal, and a, a fourth player to be named in a trade. I hope by then somebody whose name you might have heard before. But these are all outstanding poets, they tell me. And being who I am, I trust them. And then on Wednesday, December 11th, we'll have the ever um, agitating and uh, ambitious Joan Gelfand and uh, her friends, which will include some more people whose names I'm not quite clear on, but probably Roy Mash from the Marine Poetry Center and Connie Post, who was a poet laureate, as well as some of these other people. I remember she poet laureate of uh, Livermore. You know, I'm the poet laureate of 56 Oak Grove Drive. So. <laughs> Bow down. <laughs> and uh, January, um, come on, you can do it. Catherine Muldoon, among others. She's a revolutionary poet brigade, Pista. So we'll, 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 we'll team her up with some, some great people. Maybe some men, you know, I haven't had any men for a while. I don't know what it is about men in poetry, but we're, we're, we're somewhat scarce. So we will start tonight with Erin Wilson, a poet, librarian. Her writing has appeared in Withstand, Arches, Bird Dog, and Kindergarten on Black Radish. Among other places, she's two chapbooks, Alphabet Garden from Edible Office and The Beautiful Ominous Bay from HMH Services. She's currently an affiliate artist right over here over the hill at Headland Center for the Arts. I give you Erin Wilson. Who is was media deprived because I couldn't come up with the right adapter for her phone. So. Yep. That's true. I have an awesome interactive poem with a recording from my brother because we wrote some poems together. It's nowhere near as good without him, so you're all the luck. Um, Should have brought him to read his card. He's in Kansas City. No. So maybe next time. Um, first, thank you for having me. Um, many of you know I work at the Fossilia Library. Many familiar faces here. So it's super exciting for me to bring this other part of my life here to Fossilia. Um, poetry is really important to me. And uh, so is librarianship. One place. So, um, and I'm also very excited to read with my dear friend, Dana T. Momax. She is one of my favorite poets and one of my very favorite humans. So it's very exciting to be here with her. And I'm gonna start with a poem from Kindergard, um, a book she uh, edited. And um, this is the library's copy. You can borrow it once I return it. It's super. So um, here is my poem from it which um, I wrote this way before I worked in Fosolito, so it's interesting that it's sailing themed. <clears throat> I set off to sail. Before launching, I stopped to look carefully at those small, dry plants that grow best in the wind, tiny flowers in the pale colors of the seaside, the colors of rocks, sandy soil, and the sky. I plucked a leaf between my fingers I don't pretend to know its name or to be interested in its history. I just wanted to smell it, to know how it captured the sea into chlorophyll, turned sea air into something I could feel on my skin, couldn't smell. I was at sea long enough to get the hang of the water, to figure out how to use my slingshot to kill the gulls who tried to feast on my hair, long enough to drink the rainwater collected in my canvas hat, to weave a blanket of seaweed, a dark green protection for sleeping. Other things happened too. Clouds rushed past my boat, trailing white thoughts that told me to reach my hands into the waves, split the moon into two slivers, the white of a clear night. One morning I woke on the shore. I still don't understand how I got as far as I did, from Peoria to Richmond, from San Francisco to Miami. He said, it is the, it is the bottomlessness that worries me. And I said, that's what worries me too. Thank you. Um, I'm going to start, besides that, 
with a quartet of um, love poems. And uh, so, yeah, I'm an artist at the Headlands right now, and in the midst of a huge project that is like in a state of total chaos and not for human consumption. Huh. So I'm not reading from that, huh. Huh. except a small bit at the end. Um, <coughs> these are all poems that I wrote a while ago. Um, so, <clears throat> some ambivalence, bring a garden poem. Her eyes are shocking. A sort of dip waste, red sparkle, my yes. It's summer. I promise my fraud is sincere and embarrassing, awkward and true. Battle given up or resolved, hopefully forgiven. Stand in the grocery aisle. Night dreams of photographs, night dreams lost word, androgynous. Ambivalent, her you swoon. I mean, we talked on the phone. I mean, one hour, three days, one hour, 40 minutes one and one half years. Early May. This morning, almost afternoon, almost, not yet, I couldn't see the clock but passing, eye flicker gesture time. I wanted to say, walk forward and walk slowly and be separate and walk slowly. It makes no sense that leaving means I'm staying, can stay, will stay, am with you. Not to be precious or casual, but I mean birds, traffic, surf, sunlight, driving. Stop to ask, no, I know those buildings. This is a different one I'm looking for, top of the hill. The hardest thing, I'm not surprised, you're not surprised, but I don't know you. How is it possible? A delight is what you said. You said pleasure, joy, you said perfect, what I'd hoped. You said, say something. I am happy to have this you a history. I'm almost ready to discuss with you a promise. I want to ask, doesn't that remind you of heartbreak? A start is shared. This reel is more, the call is met, all sure, all honest, all listen here. Say yearn, say risk, say transform to learn. Hearts reach, her ease, her footsteps, hers. More sky, air, breath. Each the other translates. Each to home, home to first, last only. Entire. A start is shared. This afternoon is a claim of heart. This time lifts, anchors. It is clear, joy, choice in next call of one another. This is seen and known. A dictionary from just your names. A vocabulary found and made together. And one more poem, love poem. <clears throat> she said, I don't like this walking through doors. Well, you, you and I remember a girl becoming the hospital, becoming a pinwheel in the garden, remember becoming a farmer, a woman, an adulterer, remember not kissing, remember holding hands. You, you expect certain faces and the wooden yoke I would carry, wooden buckets, wooden ladles, that's easier in the bathroom mirror, the undershirt necklace, you, you, your sunken mattress, ready deadline tomorrow evening. You, you, Protect my toes from failing speed. I'm barely ready to open. Late trains, bare shoulders, open doors, uncertain shoulders. This isn't everything I'm not remembering. You, you, please urgent forget. And so at this moment, you can all close your eyes and imagine what a what I would write about baseball would be. <laughs> but my brother does, and we wrote it together, and it's a lot about statistics, and <coughs> analyzing our relationship through numbers. Another time, you can hear that poem. Um, for now, Dana, can you um, hand this out? Um, I have a handout, which Dana will pass around. So one of the things that I do is I, um, 
i call them bibliographic interventions, which basically means i take my more traditional text and then i do things to make it really clear that it's a book, make it really clear it's a poem, it's a thing that i am writing, you are reading, we are reading in this moment in time, but it comes after a million other moments in time a million other writers and thinkers and so i find ways i'm very interested in how to break the page um and so i write annotated bibliographies that get published as poems i have texting footnotes although i'm less enamored with footnotes right now um so i am going to read to you from my in progress annotated bibliography for the crazy project that's a total mess that I'm writing at the headlines. So, um, if you take a look, hopefully you all can at least look on, on with me. If you take a look, you'll see on, on the far the call number, title, author, date, and then a brief annotation. Um, these are all things that I've been reading and thinking about and um, engaging in as I've been doing the writing, just to take you down a few of them on the list. Um, as I mentioned, I'm the librarian of the block. So the first title, Out Behind the Desk, Workplace Issues for LGBTQ Librarians, something I think about a lot, came out in 2011, so it still addresses a lot of contemporary issues. Um, chapters include Girl Meets Girl, Girl Works with Girl, Girl Falls in Love with Girl. Has not happened yet to me, much to my disappointment. Um, gay librarians on the tenure track, not relevant to me because I'm public librarian, but on being <coughs> as if imagination and gay librarianship, I think that's pretty interesting. Um, the next book, Cloud the Three, was written by um, an amazing visual artist named Helen Mira, and it's uh, an astonishing book. She's taken John Dewey's Reconstruction of Philosophy and she's indexed it. So, for example, on page three, he refers to a cloud, the cloud. So that's where the title of the book comes. Cloud, comma, the, comma, three. The whole book is like that. It gives you this completely different way of participating in a text and ideas and lyricism and breaking down what, where, how do you find meaning and make meaning. It's super gorgeous. Um, I'm really into essay films. Agnes Varda is one of my favorites. And her uncle lived here. Varda Landing is from him up in City Hall. One of his paintings is when you first walk in. So, and at the library, we have tons and tons of her movies. They're awesome. So here's a great quote from her. We feel time differently when we are suffering or are in pain or we are waiting for something. So subjective time became the subject for me, plus the duration of the time of the film that the spectator perceives. Um, looking down below, strong poison, love, and the novelistic in Dorothy Sayers. She's a great detective fiction writer. Um, I think this quote is really interesting about the role of detec detective fiction. The murder mystery has a solution that can be arrived at through careful reasoning. The love is most dangerous because it is unsolvable. Um, the next book, The Case of the Not-So-Nice Nurse, is a um, very campy, contemporary, lesbian, high drama, ridiculous <laughs> mystery novel. And as my annotation says, I'm smarter. Um, the Galton Case by Ross MacDonald. Um, if you don't know Ross MacDonald, I cannot emphasize enough how amazing he is as a writer. The Galton Case is my favorite. It's just an astonishing mystery. Just unpacking it and where he goes is great. And then the thing with MacDonald is that his language is just you read it and if you stop and appreciate it, it just, he's teaching you how to see, really. So I love this. Um, this is just a throwaway description. This isn't even a main character. She wasn't young. Close up, I could see the 40-ish lines in her face and the knowledge in her blue eyes. But she held herself with adolescent awkwardness, immobilized by feelings she couldn't express. Um, Orlando, a biography. No one does sentences or in as well as Virginia Woolf. Um, 15 Love Tests. It's a novel, and then there is literally a quiz at the end that helps guide you whether or not you're a good match for the novelist. Um, questions include, do you ever wear sexual clothes? The person taking this test must say they do not wear sexual clothes. A 
cannot teach about this because their sexual dress likely is very important to their happiness. It just, The Long Goodbye, amazing movie, great book. If you haven't seen the movie, Robert Alton, Elliot Gould, cannot go wrong. And three things that I like to think about when I watch it, which is often. First is really, the camera is always moving. It never stays still. So you're constantly within Altman's eye as he's checking out the world and looking and seeing. Um, and it keeps you on your toes, just very subconsciously. You don't even notice that at first. Um, and then of course the song is replayed and manipulated and reconstrued in every different setting. And then you just think about Marlowe. It's the early 70s, but he's wearing a suit. He's totally betrayed. He's fussing over his cat. It's, um, he's really, he's out of time. Um, and then, you know, I love to listen to music that, uh, when I'm writing, that even though I've heard it a million times, I cannot, cannot predict what's going to happen next. It's just like a constant sonic surprise. And so two things that I love to listen to, great black music message to our folks, anything by the Art Ensemble of Chicago that you can't go wrong. Um, this one... I just love it. It is. It's a sermon and the responses, and then you get grunts and bebop drums and shouts and calls. Um, it's very interesting. And then um, drone. The album is actually not a drone. It's by a band called A Pairing. came out in 2013, and it really truly is folk music, but in order to appreciate it that way, you have to let go of all expectation of recognizable elements of melody and rhythmic consistency. So thank you guys very much. Last time I invited a librarian. Jeez, oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Give it up for Aaron. That was fabulous. Now we've all had our, our taste. which is important, I think, it just good taste costs no less. And it's still expensive. Not at the library. <laughs> sure. yeah. All right. Well, I think I'll do Dana next. Dana Teen Lomax recent work includes Kindergarten, which was mentioned before. Is, is Aaron in it? Yeah, we, are we, do we have copies available here for sale? I don't. I believe that. I'm out. Well, that's a good thing to be. It's much better to be out than have a box lurking. <laughs> Avant-garde poems, plays, stories, and songs for children. It's really cool. I know some of the other poets that are in the book, and it's beautifully illustrated as well. Um, a whole bunch of other stuff, but as I was carrying the page in here, it ripped, so I'm... <laughs> oh, that's good enough. That's... She's in the Bay Poets Anthology, Poets and Writers, Imaginary Syllabi Against Expression from Northwest University Press. She served as the director of Small Press Traffic Literary Arts Center in San Francisco. And she's working on a book of poems entitled Shh, Lullapies for a Tired Nation. Oh my gosh, we so need that. How about, how about a book of ways to murder Republicans? So I think that would be more appreciated, more timely. <laughs> before they murder us. Dana teaches writing at San Francisco State University and the Marin Juvenile Hall. She lives, literally, at Duffy's Cross Bar Hotel, and I kid you not, <laughs> better known as San Quentin. <laughs> Dana T. <Tim> Lomax. <laughs> Hello. Thank you so much. I'm happy. We'll see what we can do about that. Okay, you do that. Um, I think I'm going to start with my mentor. Um, a few years back, I worked with a dear friend, uh, Jennifer Firestone, who lives in New York, on this book called Letters to Poets. And um, I was super stoked that Cornell West put a little blurb on the back. I was like, I'm pretty good now. And he called it visionary, so then I was really good. And it's 100 years after Rilke's letters to a young poet. 
and I asked Ann Waldman and uh, Jen and I did asked you know Quincy Troop, Wanda Coleman, Ann Waldman, Paul Hoover, just a bunch of poets to write to a younger poet for a year, and we published both sides. You know, Rilke just has the masters. We did both. So I want to read just. Uh, the end of what my mentor, Claire Braz Valentine, I don't know if you know her out of Santa Cruz, a, a great person and poet, uh, wrote uh, to me. This is the last letter. We did three letters over the course of a year. She did three and I three. And um, I'll just read a little tiny bit of her last letter. Claire writes to me, I often think of myself as a woman who writes when the fancy hits her. From my first memory of poetry, when that nun in fourth grade read Sea Fever by John Macefield, and I got hooked. I have been hooked. I cannot see something clearly unless I write it down in words on a piece of paper. Even now, after so many years working on the computer, a blank book, a piece of paper, a pencil is often the key that opens my thoughts. The truth is that we are all uncomfortable in our own body, our own life. We want so terribly to get it right. We look at others and think, if I only could have done it that way, looked that way, written that way, we are a constant whip on our own back. We never let go. We need to breathe, relax into that person we were born into, be her. Let her think, create, love, and rest. Let her laugh even at the wrong moments. And let her weep uncontrollably when she needs to. When all is accounted for, I want to have evolved into that woman I have always wanted to be. And I am working on her. Every day of my life, I am working on her. And as time passes, I am getting closer and closer to her. So thinking about that um, and the idea of subjective time, which I loved that a lot from Aaron's reading.